Yo, it's your boy DC Tree from DC Tree Dash Nation.com where we cover hoops and heroes. And today we're talking hoops. My man Tim Duncan, the big homie, has returned. And I gotta tell you, man, I love hearing news like this. Tim Duncan epitomizes what it is to be a class act and an NBA legend, man. I'm so happy to hear this news. But it's one defining trait about Tim Duncan that even takes my respect for him to a whole nother level. One defining trait. But before I jump into it, if you like my content, please sub to the channel. Okay, I'm jump straight into it. I was shocked to find out that Tim Duncan even wanted to be an assistant coach. He didn't seem the type. He seemed like he was shy away from that aspect of the NBA. But once again, his defining trait has shined through. The defining trait about Tim Duncan that I've respected over the years before news of him being the assistant coach, but it made me think of this and made me have even more respect for him is the fact that he always reinvents himself. He's never stagnant. If you look at Tim Duncan's career, he came into the league pretty much kind of like Kawhi Leonard, a hundred percent mute. He didn't say much. You know, he just let his game do the talking and there's nothing wrong with that. But he evolved into a champion. He evolved into a leader. He evolved, evolved into that guy that, you know, inspired people in the huddle. And then he took it a step further and he, you know, passed the torch to Tony, passed the torch to Mono, passed the torch, you know, to Kawhi in some regards, you know, and he did it in a classy fashion. He always was re reinventing himself when he was no longer the league MVP and he was no longer the finals MVP. He was still relevant. And even after he retired, he continued to evolve. This man started, you know, his own auto mechanic shop, you know, customs and stuff like that. It didn't seem to type. And he did that too. And then you look up, He's a UFC fighter, basically. You know, he's studying martial arts. You get what I'm saying? You know, seeing this seven foot guy, skinny, staying in shape, you know, learning how to fight. He was just living his best life. And from afar, as a fan of his, I always respected that. You know, he took it further. You know, he was hunting big game. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell Tim Duncan out here doing? But I wasn't hating on him. I wasn't hating on him. But it was interesting seeing that he would be interested in something like that. I'm like, this dude, he think he's the great Gatsby, man. This joker hunting big games, finding rubies and stuff. <laughs> so Tim Duncan always, you know, try to change himself up. You know, even when, if you go back to his game, go back to his game. Remember, he was this big, tough, power forward. He shifted his game, guys became a spot up shooter from like 15, 20 feet and it completely changed how the Spurs played. So he always had this mentality of not becoming stagnant, always looking to get better, always doing things better. And despite all his adventures after, you know, you know, playing basketball and being the greatest powerful ever, he still made time to come back and help the current Spurs. He just come to the practice facility and play with these guys. And I'm just so cool to me because usually when legends leave the game of basketball they're gone the only person i could really think about is maybe magic johnson that you know was just constantly around you know you know of course after you know the hiv thing once he got over that and defeated that which i don't i still don't understand that but i'm happy for him <laughs> other than him you know, usually people leave and disappear. You know, Jordan's around, but you barely hear about him. You know, Kobe's around, but you hear about him every couple, you know, every, you know, twice a year, maybe. So it's just, it's just weird. It's going to be weird just seeing Tim Duncan at every Spurs game. I mean, weird in a good way, of course. Weird in a good way. And let's not forget all the work the Tim Duncan Foundation does for the Virgin Islands, all the work it does for people you know, hit by bad weather, hurricane relief, man, he's always there for the people of Texas and his home, um, the VI. And you just got to tip his hat for being so classy and, and, you know, just present, you know. And if you really think about it, man, he's been through some hurricanes himself from, on a personal basis, man. Remember, he had a messy divorce, messy divorce. But not once, you know, did you, could you tell by his work ethic on the court that it was something going on? You couldn't tell that. You know, he had to hire a private investigator to catch his wife cheating, man. 
They had two kids and everything, so I know that had to suck. But boy, did he rebound, though. He rebound, whatever, that Vanessa, whatever her last name is. You know, I can't pronounce it. But boy, I know she's spicy. Spicy senorita. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tim. I'm sorry. If you're listening to this, which I'm pretty sure you're not. But if you're listening to this, I'm just saying she's fine, man. She's just fine. But anyways, he's been through some things. And then he had the accountant steal $20 million from him. That was crazy. But yet, he's still living his best life. He's still out here doing things. He's still evolving. He's still becoming better. And now he's a coach. Wow. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Just a video just showing my love for Tim Duncan, man. Welcome back, brother. Welcome back. Maybe I could finally get that elusive autograph that I've been trying to get for decades. <laughs> I guess I have to wait and see. For more information on the Spurs and Tim Duncan, check out the main page, dctrue-nation.com. Like us on Facebook. Don't forget to hit that sub button and help brother out. Peace.